All right, everybody, it is daily demo time, and we've got a very special guest for you today. It is GameSpot's own Greg Kasavin, an alumnus of the site that a lot of you guys will probably recognize and know very well. Greg, it's good to have you back in the Thanks. office. Thanks, it's really good to be here. So, Greg, you are, um, you know, you're working on games now, and your, your, your upcoming game that you guys are working on now is, is called Bastion. What's this one all about? Uh, well, uh, this is an, uh, it's a small independent game that uh, I'm working on with just a few people um, but uh, hopefully the, the game will, will seem much bigger than that. It's, it's an original action role-playing game uh, in which uh, there's this narrator who sort of uh, uh, guides you through this story uh, but reacts to you as you go. Uh, the idea of hearing like an old man talk at you the entire time as you play probably sounds pretty terrible, but uh, we'll, we'll play it in a second and hopefully um, the, the actual uh, response uh, will be different. It's it's uh, got this kind of full uh, full HD hand painted art style mm -hmm. um, and and this kind of really responsive uh, combat system that we're going for. It's it's much more action oriented than typical uh, action role playing games are. Uh, and hopefully, you know, uh, people will come away from it with like a a, a unique uh, experience from from the story and kind of every every aspect of the world. Yeah, I had the good fortune of being able to play the um, the demo that you guys provided for us this morning, and I absolutely loved it. Had a blast with it. But the good news is, you guys don't have to take it all from me. We've actually got the game right here, and we're going to show it to you. So, Greg, go all ahead right. and uh, boot up a new game, and let's see how it starts from the very beginning. Here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. So, um, since we have a narrator, I'm going to shut up for a lot of this and just <laughs> kind of let him uh, do his thing. But the idea here is that he um, he's not just dictating the story to you. Uh, a lot of it happens reactively as you uh, participate in, in what's going on. So He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Ground forms up under his feet as if pointing the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. Well, it's a touching reunion. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant in the calamity. That a survivor? No man. It's a gas fellow, forced out from underground. Kid pops him good. Kid looks down to see he's been hurt. Ain't the first time. Old repeater drops out of the sky. Ain't manna from the heavens, but it'll have to do. Got a holder still to spin up the chamber. Kids worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. A school of squirts tunnels up around them. Must have fled here from the mines. taste of what the narrator has to offer and one of the things I, I liked about the narrator is not only does he have that that cool gruff mysterious voice but it's just it's all encompassing he's giving you story elements he's giving you tutorial elements but he's also narrating the actual core gameplay itself yeah that's um, that's that's all uh, in line with what we're going for we we really um, don't he intend for him to just like he, he's he's not an he's not a play-by-play -play announcer right he's like uh, we we really want his presence uh, to be something that like deepens uh, just about every interaction that you have in the world and this scene is is actually an example so Ronnie always wanted his ashes scattered here so you 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 do something in the world An and he'll give you information the that there's no way you sort of could have known right um, and so. As you go through, you're, you're learning about this world and learning about these characters um, in a way that is all happening in context. So, because uh, we wanted to give you, uh, we wanted this game to have an interesting story to it and an interesting world, but but we're not 
we, we don't think that it's, uh, you know, we think it's okay for people to not care either. It's like we, we don't assume that people just care about our grand story. Um, so um, rather than, you know, dump a bunch of cutscenes or, or, you know, big text, text scrolling text of like, you know, this is a world where so and so happened. Right. Um, we we came up with, uh, you know, we happened on this technique um, where uh, all of it happens, you know, contextually as you're playing, um, and uh, it it seemed promising, and we kept pursuing it, um, and here we are with this uh, kind of pervasive uh, narrated style. More squirts start coming out of the woodwork. Now we've talked a bit about the the narration, but Bastion is, as you mentioned, also an Google action Google. RPG. Google. It is a game yeah. where. You know, for all these cool original um, narration elements, it's still a game where it's it's fun to run around smashing things with a yeah, hammer. Yeah, that that is uh, that's absolutely essential to us. It's like we first and foremost um, is uh, is the the play experience of this game and and our our influences um, on the genre. You know, are are very broad. We're not we're not just we're not just seeking to make uh, an action RPG as much as we love you know games like Diablo and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, our our influences include uh, uh, just the whole um, the whole slew of action games from from the 16-bit era on to the present. You know, uh, everything from like Bayonetta, you know, all the way back to, to the kind of golden age of, of the Super Nintendo. Um, we are, you know, we did want this game to have that kind of very crisp uh, feel to it that um, some classic games used to have. And that, that I think a, a lot of 3D games these days kind of struggle to achieve because they have to have their you know really fluid uh, motion captured animations and whatnot. Right. Um, whereas there was a time when you just like pressed a button and something immediately happened. We wanted that like immediate. We wanted that sense of immediacy, uh, that sense of like extremely precise control where you can uh, perform uh, moves with with a lot of finesse and, and good timing and feel like you're never fighting with the controls. Yeah, and, and in my experience, the, the core controls are very immediate and precise, but there's also some, some depth and strategy there in the way that you, you customize these weapons and you actually customize yourself as well. How do you explain the, the customization? Elements. Yeah, th that's um, so uh, I, I, it's, it's great that you uh, picked up on that because uh, th that's absolutely what we're going for. Uh, this isn't the sort of game where you just have like a linear progression of, of power as in a lot of action RPGs where you fight an enemy that's more powerful than you, you gain a few levels, and then suddenly you can you can beat it up. This is really much more about uh, fighting with finesse um, and finding uh, play styles that really suit you. Uh, like each of the weapons in the game, um, they're meant to be balanced. They're not just uh, fundamentally superior to one another. Mm -hmm. um, it's about uh, finding, it, they, they each have their own unique play mechanics and stuff. Like previously we were fighting with the repeater, which was more of this kind of machine gun style weapon where you right. can't move and fire. Uh, this one, the breaker's bow, has this timing element where if I uh, release the arrow right as I flash white, I do additional damage. Okay. Um, so every weapon has its own little mechanics like that for you to master, yeah, and then the um, feel like a new you'll be able to upgrade them further and customize them uh, to suit your needs. This is another aspect of customization in the game, which is the distillery, and you, you sort of... Uh, drink these spirits and they, they give you new powers, but some may have side effects like uh, the Doom Shine here, which gives you a chance to deal critical hits, but also reduces your maximum health. Um, I can counteract that with this one, which increases my maximum health, but uh, I can't actually use it yet because uh, I haven't uh, gained enough uh, uh, enough experience. But I'm just going to go out there with uh, Doom Shine because I'm a aggressive type of player and want to just uh, d dish out more damage and at the expense of, you know, taking some additional damage. Um, and here again, it's like, here's where I can select my weapons. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's unrestricted, so if I want to go out there with two ranged weapons, I can do that. You could take two weapons at a time, um, and you, you gain uh, kind of a, these, these various special abilities with each of your weapons as well. So I'm going to stick to the hammer because I like it, uh, but uh, I will go back to the repeater. And then equip. Uh, the, uh, one of the repeater's uh, special weapons here. And some of the weapons, I have to say, can get pretty uh, pretty destructive, the ones you find later on. Like yeah. The, the little mor the mortar cannon, It's uh, that one's fun. And then there's also one called the uh, the war machine, which is sort of like a, a rapid-fire ninja blade. Oh, the, the, the machete, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the um, yeah, we, uh, that, that's right. Like, um, early on, you know, we, just when you think it's it's gonna be you, you know 
it's a deliberate choice with the with the visual style of the game to where you can't quite place like the time period. Mm -hmm. Like, is this modern? Is this is this the past and so on? And it's uh, it's kind of got this uh, American frontier kind of vibe to it. So um, we don't uh, we don't just stick with these like medieval style weapons like bows and hammers. You you do work your way up to to guns and. Uh, fun stuff of that nature uh, that, that can feel pretty destructive, but then, um, you know, the encounters will scale up accordingly, so. And when, when talking about combat, it's probably necessary to talk about the, uh, the types of enemies that you encounter. Who are these guys, and why are they here, and why are you, why are you destroying them all? Yeah, that's a, uh, so, you, as, as with every aspect of this game, um, you will sort of uh, piece together that story as you go. Uh, these guys, as a as a faction, they're they're called the Windbags, and they were these kind of uh, indigenous uh, helper creatures in this world. Um, but now, after this event called the Calamity happened and like blew the world apart, um, they have uh, you know they have uh, sort of run a run afoul here and are causing trouble. Um, and uh, what you've learned so far is that they um, you know they they've been sort of for, they used to mind their own business down in the mines, and and now they're above ground, and and you can sort of uh, infer that. Maybe that's because there are no longer any mines for them to go back to. Um, so you'll learn more about them and uh, the game's other uh, kind of uh, creature factions as, as the game wears on. We we want um, um, we you know we want all of these guys to feel very uh, kind of ingrained in the world and each have their own uh, each each have their own stories. You know, it's not it's not as simple as like these are just bad guys trying to stop you, like everyone in this game wants something uh, because uh, their their world has changed and now they're trying to make do. Um, this is an example, you know, th in this particular encounter, uh, this this is kind of a taste of where some of the combat is going to go later on because, uh, as, as you can see, I can actually fall here if I'm not careful. Um, we, we start you off pretty gently, but uh, later on in the game, uh, you'll, you'll get into some pretty tricky situations. We we want uh, part of uh, the appeal of this kind of world design to us is this sense of like precariousness right. that that things can kind of fall in or, or fall out from under your feet at any moment. So we, we get to it gives us license to have combat in like interesting places instead of uh, in you know in giant vast plains or something like that. He steals the city's heart. I almost feel, actually I do feel quite guilty talking over this narrator because a lot of things that we're covering, he actually explains himself. So I should probably point out that uh, we're, you know, we're, we're capturing a video of this as we speak and we'll be sure to put up uh, gameplay clips on the site. So make sure to go to the Bastion page to go check out those, those gameplay clips to hear the narrator uninterrupted without us yammering <laughs> on. Because it is, it is great stuff and I really enjoy the narrator. So, so for a little bit more context guys, be sure to check that out. Now, the world is, it's shaking. It's, a, it, it's, uh, yeah. it doesn't look fun for the kid right now. Yep, he, uh, he took something uh, called a core, which as a player, you don't necessarily know the meaning of it uh, when you do it, but uh, this, this sort of dramatic event happens around it and you're gonna learn more about what's going on with those um, in a bit. And that's kind of the way, uh, it, part of the way we, we deliver a story in the game that you kind of, do, you 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 learn more about your actions sometimes after the fact, without uh, giving away too much. <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of like. This is still the prologue of the game. Um, well, I won't spoil anymore. <laughs> That's just the prologue. Uh, the the story kind of continues from here. Uh, the narrator is is pervasive throughout the experience, and and we uh, we're we're very excited about kind of where where the story goes and where, where the, the gameplay itself goes. So. Yeah, and you know, like I mentioned, I had a great time with this. I'm That's cool. eager to see more. And, uh, and as I mentioned before, make sure to check out those gameplay clips on the Bastion game space on the site, because we talked over a lot of that narrator, and it's definitely worth checking out. So Greg, we, like I said, I appreciate you coming by Thank very much, um, which leads us to the natural final question. When do you expect Bastion to be coming out, and do you have any, uh, any price considerations yet? Um, well, it, so we're aiming for summer of 2011, mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be a digitally distributed game. So we're we're hoping it'll be on uh, XBLA and PSN and PC. Uh, no, we we don't have a, a distributor just yet, um, though though we're we're uh, getting 
uh, pretty close on that front. Okay. So we'll, we'll have announcements about actual platforms and stuff, but as a digitally distributed title, uh, you can expect pricing in that kind of range. It's not going to be like a $60 game. Sure. Um, so. Sounds good. Great. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. There you guys have it. That's your look at Bastion. Now on with the rest of the show.